Welcome back to Young Engineers of Today. Uh, this will probably actually be the last uh, Amazing Mechatronics uh, presentation we're going to have. We're going to spend this time fi um, finishing the uh, physical computing Raspberry Pi bit, and then I do have some uh, sample questions I can show you guys, and so we can go over that and just basically get comfortable with it, and hopefully that should give you an idea of what you'll be looking for when you actually do the competition. So. Let's go ahead and get started. We only got a couple of people here today. Hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, as a review, our circuit was still pretty simple. It's the LED circuit we had last time around, hooked up to GPIO 17. Uh, however, we did add a button into it, and the button is hooked up instead of GPIO 8, uh, 18, it's GPIO 27. And that was just so we had enough space to hook everything up. That was really all it was. There wasn't anything special or different about it. That was just because uh, there was a space concern. So yeah, we hooked the button up to, to GPIO 27 and that should act as an input. Now you remember at the time I had you hook up um, a resistor and then pull it off. Uh, and that was because uh, the Raspberry Pi was set up to have a pull down resistor on GPIO 27. Um, it's generally good form, I guess, to have a uh, to have a uh, a large resistor hooked up to the button at all times. Uh, it also encourages the button to send um, a you make sure you have a complete circuit all the time and it also encourages the button to send a signal to the the input pin that you're looking for uh, again because it's going to be traveling down the path of the path of least resistance. And so you want to make sure that you're always getting electricity down that whenever you want it. So the the pull down resistor in uh, that you can configure in a Raspberry Pi does essentially the same thing. So in this case, we don't need the resistor. Uh, we're just going to use the pull down resistor that uh, the Raspberry Pi comes with, so that you can still have a circuit. And in addition, you can also you know um, be certain that you're getting a signal on on GPIO 27, and that it's not too strong. Then we set up our forever loop and an if statement. And remember, we spent all that time talking about if statements. Basically, the, they change the flow of your program based on the state of it. So, you know, in case something changes, like uh, if you're writing a like a little dungeon crawler or something like that, if your hero runs out of health, you want something different to happen, right? Um, because that could happen really at any point. If they're a really good player, it could never happen. If they're just starting out, it could happen in the first room. So. You know, you want to make sure that you handle that situation in case it happens. Um, and that's why you might use something like an if statement. Uh, in this situation, we're checking to see if there's input from the button. So uh, if we get a signal in on GPIO 27, so we have an if statement that checks for it. We ask, is there input on GPIO 27? If there is, then do whatever we have inside of that, you know, little if statement block. In this case, we used the uh, operators uh, section of the Raspberry Pi, or of Scratch, excuse me. And um, we asked if the sensor value of GPIO 27 was equal to one, which basically just means on. Uh, with a lot of computers, um, one is going to mean on or true, and zero is going to mean off or false. So we wanna make sure that it's true or on so we're asking, is it equal to one? Um, so anytime you're asking for like a an input value or whether or not something's true, um, sometimes it's useful to know that if it is true, it's going to evaluate to be one. That's just, in computer speak, true. Likewise, zero is false. So if we were asking if GPIO uh, 27 sensor value is equal to zero, uh, this if statement would be true anytime we're not pressing the button because it would be the opposite, right? Anytime GPIO 27 is not sending a value into a Raspberry Pi, this if statement would be true. It's a little weird, but you know, you you get used to it. And uh, in the end, it, it actually, it, it makes a, a certain sort of sense. So anyway, we never actually filled anything into the if statement. Well, we did. Actually, no, we did get to this slide. It was to 
broadcast GPIO 17 on uh, if that statement was ever true, which just means that you press the button and the LED turns on. But we never got any further than this, which means that there was an issue with your circuit, and that was the Raspberry Pi would start up, the LED would be off, you'd press the button and the LED would turn on, and the LED would never turn off again. It would stay on for as long as the Raspberry Pi was receiving power and never restarted or anything like that. So th th this just is a good illustration of the fact that, you know, computers are dumb. They don't do anything unless we explicitly tell them to. In this case, we didn't actually tell them to turn the LED off, so they never do that. They never want to assume, you know. I mean, to us, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. We go, okay, so, you know, hold that, like, the the keep the LED on as long as the button is held down. Um, well, we gave the Raspberry Pi one half of that equation, and we need to do the other half, which is to turn it off whenever it's not receiving a signal. Well, in this case, it'll wait 0 0.5 seconds, so it'll wait half a second. And then it'll turn off. So this code is actually a little bit different. Uh, in this case, whenever you press the button, even if you're holding it down for like 20 seconds straight, the LED is only going to turn on for half a second, and then it's going to turn off. Um, can you hook up a second button using pin? No, no, we'll, we'll ignore that. Um, what if you wanted the LED to turn off anytime the button wasn't being held down. So uh, you hold down the button and the LED remains on, and then you release the button and the LED turns off. What about that? You guys have any ideas about how you might want to do that? Spend a minute thinking about it, and uh, if you have an idea, throw it into the question box. Um, well, okay, so basically we have this if statement that, um, you know, if GPIO 8, uh, you could do that. So you could throw in a wait um, until, until the, uh, you could have like an indefinite wait until the button's no longer held. But the problem in that is like, okay, so let's do, let's do something like this. Uh, we've got our forever loop, right? We've got our if statement, uh, if sensor equals on, or, or one actually, they're kind of synonymous. Um, and then we'd say turn on LED and wait. The problem with this is if we just say like wait, we can't say wait until done or something like that. The best we can do is we can say just like wait forever and the problem we run into this situation is the loop starts, we hold down the button, so this becomes true. So it goes here, turns on the LED, and then it waits forever. And this, in a sense, is kind of like, uh, well, we, we basically just locked up the Raspberry Pi, because it will be stuck on this line of code forever. It will never, it will never drop out of that. So. I like that. Unfortunately, there isn't really any way to um, to input a wait command until it's uh, until the, the button is no longer being held down. So, what you might want to do is you might want to say if sensor equals off, then turn off LED. So now. We can, before we get into the forever loop, we can say turn off LED. Just to ensure that every time the program starts up, the LED will be off. And we don't have any like uh, weird situations in which the LED is on until we press the button and release it. So the LED will always turn off every time the program starts up. And then we go into our forever loop. And then we ask, is it on? 
If it is, then turn on the LED. If it's off, then turn off the LED. And if you're holding down the button, this forever loop is going to be, well, this forever loop, regardless, is going to be running um, several hundred times a second, right? So it's pretty much going to detect the moment you either press the button or release the button. It's going to have a very, 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 very low latency time. So it's going to feel instantaneous. You know, you press that button, and as soon as you do, the LED turns on. And you release that button, and as soon as you do, the LED turns off. However, each time, like let's say you're holding down the button, each time it goes to the loop, it checks, and it checks both of these statements. It goes, oh, okay, uh, the sensor's on. Turn on the LED. Okay, the sensor's on. Turn on the LED. Okay, the sensor's on. Turn on the LED. And then you're going to like, oh, it's going to go, oh, okay, the sensor's off. Turn off the LED. And then, you know, you're just sitting there staring at the thing, and it's going to keep going through this part of the code over and over and over again until you hold down the button, and then it'll pop back up to this one. So it seems a little uh, redundant or something like that. But on the other hand, this is definitely a, um, a certainly an effective way, or one of the effective ways, to, uh, you know, make sure that the LED turns on when you hold down the button and turns off when you let go of the button. Um, but that's kind of the beautiful thing about coding anyway, is the fact that there are usually like uh, at least dozens of different answers to arrive at, you know, or dozens of different ways to arrive at the same conclusion. Um, in this scenario, a little bit less sure about what, what could be done differently because this is um, generally the, the most lightweight way to do something like this. But you could have, you know, a variable that stores the state of the sensor and it says, you know, if the sensor is on, then turn on the LED. Like, if that variable is 1, then turn on the LED. If that variable is 0, then turn off the LED. So you could throw an extra step into the equation, I guess. Um, you could, let's see here. I guess there are, the, with, res, with uh, Scratch, there's a little bit less of a, uh, sort of uh, room to play as far as your options are concerned. But with with many cases with coding, um, you do have many different ways of arriving at the same answer. So that there is, um, oh, I know what else you could do. No, you can't do that with Raspberry Pi or with Scratch, unfortunately. With normal coding, you could do something like, um, or with most for, many forms of coding, you could do something like LED equals sensor. And that's it. So when the sensor is 1, um, the value sent to the LED is 1. And when the sensor is 0, the value sent to the LED is 0. And that can sometimes be a much simpler way to do something like that. Um, but we're not going to worry about that because you guys are using Scratch. And Scratch has a very straightforward system, straightforward way of doing a lot of things. So in this case, um, you could just do two separate if statements, asking if the button is on or if the button is off, and then uh, you know flipping the LED on or off regardless. So you could, uh, and in that way, you could you could flip it around too. You could say like, oh, whenever the button's held down, turn off the LED. Whenever the button's released, turn on the LED. That kind of thing. You know, you could you could make your own variances on it. Uh, well, that's there's a way to get the cat to walk. Let's actually spend some time um, let's spend some time going over the sample questions so that you guys have time to do that and we'll go through those at a decent like you know we'll, we'll spend a decent amount of time on each question just to make sure that you guys understand exactly what what's happening in each of them uh, and then we will um, if it happens to end a little bit early well then we'll end a little bit early so let me go ahead and pull those up Getting those open right now.
Sorry, they're taking a moment. Um, I don't have them available. Let me see if I can send them into the handouts real quick. There we go. Okay, so they should be in the handouts now. Um, they're labeled screenshot 2017, January 26th at 452.40 and 452.57, respectively. And they're each just one question, so it's uh, it's pretty it's pretty simple actually. Um, but let's take a look at them. Okay, so <clears throat> this first one is just uh, is just a um, like a debugging kind of question. In fact, most of these are going to be, I believe. Um, but it says, after starting the program, the cat runs off the stage. How do you keep the cat on the stage? Please look at the script and answer the questions below. And let me see if I can't make this larger. Okay. There we go. We'll take a look at it like that. So as you can see, the cat is running southwards. And it says, when the green flag is clicked, point in direction 180, and then forever move 10 steps. So take a minute to think about why um, or how you could keep the cat from running off the stage. You could do that. That's actually one of the things you could do. This is this is actually one of those examples where there are a couple of different answers that are that are definitely valid. So one of the answers is would you just do if on edge turn 180 degrees and keep going? And yeah, you could totally do that. Because we're moving 10 steps, which is relative movement, right? So if they reach the edge, they can just flip position, and then the forever loop is totally fine. So if move, you know, if uh, if on edge, flip, and then move ten steps and move ten steps, blah 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 blah. Is there a bounce off the edge block? There is something like if on edge bounce, um, uh, and what that does is I believe it flips your. Um, is it flips the uh, the direction based on which wall you hit. So if you hit one of the right or left walls, it will flip your X direction. If you hit one of the top or bottom walls, it will flip your Y direction. So that is definitely something you could do um, because if you hit use if on edge bounce, uh, it will flip the cat's Y direction anytime it hits the top or the bottom of the screen. So yeah, that's one thing you could do. What else? What, is, what else do you think you could do?
Yeah. You could use a reset to, you know, put the cat back its original position to X and Y zero. You could remove the forever part of the loop. And so, yeah, he had moved 10 steps. Um, what else could you do? Uh, you could make him stop as soon as he reaches the edge of the screen. Uh, use like a, an actual if statement and say, you know, if position Y equals or is greater than like negative 199 or less than negative 199 or something like that, um, then, you know, stop or something something to that effect. You could do a few different things. And those would all definitely be uh, valid ways of ensuring that the cat stays on the stage. Let me see here. I'm opening up the other... Uh, the other document. Jeez. So these are going to take a moment, apparently. Yeah, uh, th this is one of those things where, um, you know, they, they're they looking for a valid answer as opposed to the answer, that sort of thing. Actually, these are, these are the solutions. Okay, I see. So there's always, oh, I see, okay. So here's the thing. Here's the tricky thing. Would answer choice F be correct? If on edge bounce after the move 10 steps. Yeah. Because it is multiple choice. Now I see what you mean. Okay, this is multiple choice, so there's always going to be one right answer. Now, that's to say, that doesn't mean that multiple ones couldn't be correct. However, there is one answer specifically that they're looking for. And in order to, I guess, make it easier, um, they're looking for the best answer in the situation. So let me see if I can't. I seem to be having some trouble opening it up you guys aren't having that issue. Well, hold on. Let me go ahead and get it opened. Open it up. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, here we go. We got A, point in direction 0, B, point in direction 90, C, replace the forever loop with a repeat loop, D, change the move block from 10 steps to 20 steps, E, add the if on edge bounce block before the point in direction 180 block, F, add the if on edge bounce block after the move 10 steps block, uh, it's supposed to be block, G, all of the above, and H, none of the above. Um, so right now it looks like you guys are pretty well split between E and F. So A is out, right? Because if it's direction, if it's point direction zero, there isn't really any specificity to that, right? Like if we just say um, we haven't we haven't we haven't specified when it should point when the cat should point in direction zero. Um, so well, that might be okay. Like we do want it to point in direction zero at some point, um, unless we unless we add a specific point. Um, where it should start or should stop, it will either not uh, go back upwards or it will go back upwards and not come back downwards and go off the edge at the top. Point direction 90 isn't really going to help us because that just means that the cat's going to head to the right. I believe it's to the right. So, you know, that's not ideal. Um, it still doesn't, still doesn't prevent the issue of him going off the screen. Uh, replace the forever loop with a repeat loop. Uh, that one 
that one is certainly valid. However, what could be wrong with that one? Yeah, exactly. If you repeat too many times, it would still go off the screen. You would have to figure out the certain number of times that it would that it would you know repeat that kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. So you know you'd run into issues there. Um, change the move block from ten steps to twenty steps. Well, that just makes them move off the screen faster. <laughs> you know, that doesn't exactly really help anything. Uh, and by extension, since we know some of these are wrong, we can cross off all of the above. So G is out. So it leaves E, F, and H. So either E or F could be correct, or neither of them would be correct, in which case H would be correct. That's the problem with all of the above and none of the above, is if you're ever unsure about you know, one or more answers, throwing in an all of the above answer really just messes with things in your head. You just go like, oh, geez, okay, so maybe it could be everything. Um, but anyway, um, we do know at least that it's not going to be all of the above, because we know that some of these answers are incorrect. So we're between E, F, and H. Now, what about E? Think about where this is placed. So if we have our script here, and we say start point in direction, oh wait, no. If on edge bounce point in direction 180, and then forever move 10 steps versus start point in direction 180 forever move 10 steps if on edge bounce well let's get rid of the comma for consistency sake so these are our two options right here this one up here is choice e this one down here is choice f Look at that E and that F. Beautiful. So between the two of these, which would you, th like, is is one, is there one that's maybe a better choice? F is wrong. There is no 180 degree turn. And then we also have F is better. Okay, uh, what do you mean by there is no 180 degree turn? All right, there you go, Meyer. So, uh, oh, I see, okay. Uh, and you, you mean for E? in the choice oh no no they're they're um sorry i see what you mean uh giants but uh this both of these are assuming the same script so the point in direction 180 exists in both scripts f because if on edge bounce is not in the forever loop so it will still go off the screen okay so i think you guys are i think you guys are touching on the thing here on the, uh, uh, on the on the crux of this this code bit right here, and that is, yeah. So this continually checks to make sure um, we're on the edge. Uh, if we do it here, the cat is in the middle of the screen, right? It asks if it's on the edge. It's not. So then it points in direction 180, and then it moves 10 steps forever. So unfortunately, that doesn't keep us from being able to, um, you know, keep the cat on the screen, or that doesn't keep the cat on the screen keep the key. whatever it doesn't keep the cat on the screen it doesn't keep the cat from being able to get off the screen i guess i should say um whereas this one every run of the forever loop we're checking to make sure the cat is not on the edge of the screen if it is then go ahead and bounce in the head in the other direction so this one should do a much better job of ensuring that the cat will stay on the screen and by extension that means that f is probably our best bet so we'd probably want to go with f in this case, this would this would be our uh, this would be our preferred answer, definitely. Oh, 
let's see, if the, in the choice F does not have any 180 degree and for E, wouldn't the point in direction 180 be in the forever loop? No, no. Uh, uh, so again, let's go back to this one. Uh, it's assuming this script already. So the point in direction 180 already exists in this script. So it doesn't explicitly say it here. Um, it does in E for purposes of providing context for where we should put if on edge bounce. It doesn't mention it in F because we don't want to put if on edge bounce near point in direction 180. However, this is still, what we're doing in this multiple choice is we're modifying this script. So even though it doesn't mention it in F, it doesn't mean that that point in direction 180 is gone. It's still there. And again, in this, in this original script, point in direction 180 is not in the forever loop. I see where you're going with it, but yeah. And that is a good question. It's always good to, to make sure that you're looking at the, um, like they, they, they're looking at it from all angles, you know? But yeah, that's actually our one sample question. But you're going to be looking at stuff like this. A lot of it's actually going to be more on the programming side of things, although there are going to be some simple um, circuits and things like that, like make an LED blink, like what we did last week, that kind of stuff. So spend some time, you know, brushing up on the that kind of stuff uh, and maybe, you know, how the, how the code flows and everything. Um, get a little bit familiar with the, um, with the wiring, but don't, you know, don't pull your hair out over it um, because uh, as I understand it, your focus is primarily going to be on the uh, software side, on the scratch side of things. I assume so. I assume it was an actual problem in the tournament. Even if it's not, it's a it's a question that is representative of the types of questions you will be asked in the tournament. So there is that at least. I don't have any, unfortunately. Um, though you might want <clears throat> to try and get in contact with Mr. Dubik and see if he has any more. Um, but when I when I asked him for these, this is for for practice questions. This was the one that he produced for me. Um, so he might have some more. But uh, you know, at the uh, I, I I certainly don't have them. Yeah, that actually does it for the uh, <clears throat> the sample question singular, um, and we've actually covered all the material, the practice material that we have, uh, insofar as the uh, the physical computing slideshows are concerned and everything like that. Um, so, if you have any more like general questions as well, um, I can certainly are the powerpoints online. Uh, <sighs> It, 
Yes. Hold on. Okay, so putting into the chat, this is um, Raspberry Pi 3. And then we've got, let me pull up the other ones. Here's Raspberry Pi 2. Oops. And Raspberry Pi 1. And we've got <clears throat> Scratch one and scratch two. For sure. Um, so those are actually all of the uh, PowerPoints that we used to um, to in this class and that's actually all the material that I had to help you guys out with so now you have everything they've been available on YouTube uh, since well since we started this actually um, there is on our YouTube channel there is a um, there is a playlist for the uh, amazing mechatronics middle school let me go ahead and pull it up Ah, okay. Well, here's a list of all of the uh, videos that we have for young engineers. Um, if you do a search for uh, middle school amazing mechatronics, you will see all of those presentations. Uh, there should be a, or a, a playlist, but it doesn't look like it's filled out yet. So I'll go ahead and fix that tonight uh, so that you guys have that. Um, but otherwise, between those two, that's that's actually all of the um, that's all the material that we've used for this uh, uh, for this set of classes. Do you guys have any other questions about anything? Uh, 
Um, otherwise, if you don't, uh, you have all the, the resources available that we've been utilizing uh, over the past few weeks here. Um, feel free to avail of those. Uh, again, if you if you want to give it a try, go ahead and try emailing Mr. Dubik about any more additional sample questions that he might have for you guys. Um, and then just brush up on on Scratch and uh, get yourself comfortable with it. And that should be everything you need to do in order to uh, in order to uh, to succeed at this. Because honestly, it's not as scary as you might think it is. Uh, Especially because seeing you guys talk through that question, uh, you guys definitely have a solid understanding of why you might want to do something. Um, and that's going to be your biggest asset when you're working with this, is the ability to talk through a problem and figure out what exactly uh, is you know, the, the reasoning behind each individual answer if you can go like okay well I don't think it's going to be a because this is not actually directly applicable I don't think it's going to be B because this situation you know is going to be you know highly situational or something like that or this this answer is highly situational or something um, as long as you are able to talk your way through the answers through the problem to arrive at the correct answer you will have a very good chance of doing very well on this So don't discount that. Um, so again, does anybody have any questions about anything? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and uh, close this down for for today, and I'll, I'll leave you guys to uh, whatever else you have to do. Okay, well then, uh, best of luck in the competition. Again, feel free to, to email us if you have any questions about anything that pop up later on. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, I might be working the competition, so I might see you there. Who, who knows? Uh, but otherwise, you guys will do all right. Just, you know, keep a level head.